Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at four of the new hot things in the June 2016 update for Adobe Photoshop CC or Photoshop CC 2015.5 as it's affectionately known. All right, so guys, there are many little things in Photoshop always, and there are always nice little enhancements along the way. I'm going to show you four of my new favorites uh, in Photoshop CC for 2015.5. All right, so here we are. Let's start off with this first image. We've got an image open here, and as you can see, this particular image is just a little on the crooked side. And in the past, had you gone to the crop tool to straighten this out, uh, you would have ended up probably with something like this. You know, as you notice, you start to straighten it, it starts to look good, but then you notice the crop handles automatically confine themselves to the boundary of the image, so you start throwing away part of your image, because if you didn't throw it away, you'd end up with all this extra white space or transparency. So, uh, in the past, you would just click OK and say, oh well, at least it's straight now, but I lost, you know, maybe 20, 30, 40% of my image. So let's undo that. And let's, uh, we're still in the crop tool, so we just click again. And now there's a brand new option called Content Aware. That's right. Content Aware has made its way into the crop tool, the crop feature set. So now with the Content Aware option, I can do the exact same thing. Rotate it to my heart's content or until I think it's straight or use the grid until it's straight. And then once it's straight, uh, you'll notice that the boundary box did not come in all the way. As a matter of fact, I can even expand it out further and it will continue to um, grab more of the image. So you grab it out as much as you want. Now, keep in mind, it's having to replicate the pixels around the image. So once I click OK, uh, it will do its thing and it will then do its content aware. So if there are things that you're not happy with, like for example, I love everything around the sky, the rocks, everything, uh, I'm sorry, everything around the mountains, the rocks and waterfall, everything came out great, except I can see this kind of distinct line, uh, which, you know, most people might not notice, but I know that's a dead giveaway for my image. So I'm just going to use the good old patch tool and come in and just take care of this one little thing, this one little thing that would just bother me because I know that line doesn't have to be there. So if I just patch that out, or if you see a repeating pattern that you don't like, then you can use the existing Photoshop features to kind of take care of them, to kind of smooth them out and make that sky whatever you want that sky to be. So that is my first um, favorite new thing in Photoshop CC, the June 2016 update, because I now get to keep more of my image when I do the content aware crop. If I need to crop in, straighten, or remove something, I get to keep the rest of the edges. All right, so second thing, and this is kind of some of that a good old Adobe magic uh, for Photoshop. So we've got a sign here, and as I can see from this sign, this is kind of like, um, it looks like a you know a, a neon sign in the middle of the day and it's kind of like handwritten letters and what if i needed to recreate this for a menu for a logo for uh for the companies who whose cafe this is now of course if this was done by hand there really is no font for this but what i would love to see is the next best thing i would love to see the closest font to it so what i'm going to do is I'm just grab my type tool and I'm just going to click the type tool right above it. And when I click the type tool right above it, I'm going to go ahead and type the word cafe. And it's in whatever font I was last in with whatever settings I was last in. So let me go change a couple things. First of all, we'll change our uh, tracking back to zero and we'll change our color. We'll kind of match the color that's already there. Okay, great. So we got our color in place. We got our word cafe in place, but of course we don't have what font this is. So I'm going to go ahead and commit to this and then uh, I'll leave that text uh, layer selected. But now I'm just going to go ahead and switch over to the marquee tool and the marquee tool will not deselect. It'll still keep that layer selected and I can go ahead and make a marquee selection around this 
hand lettering type. Now there's a little accent or lasso or something on the end of it. I don't really need that. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and say, make the selection around just the part that's type. And what I would really love to know is which of my fonts or which of my available type kit fonts are close to this. So now we have a brand new feature in the type menu called match font. And this is phenomenal because I can do a match font. And the first thing it'll do is it'll go through my font list and start looking for fonts that are similar to it. Now, again, it's hand lettering. It's not going to be exact, but I can see what's here. And what's even more important because I have that type layer selected, I could even say, hey, what does Kinescope look like regular? That kind of looks close. Uh, I, I'd be happy with that. Or maybe Quimby Mayorial. Yeah, it's not exactly the same, but, you know, it's close. I kind of like it. And uh, Mistral Regular. And let's say there's a font that it thinks is close, but it's not installed. If it's a font available from Typekit, uh, like this Tornak Regular, I can go ahead and select that, and it will sync it down uh, using Creative Sync down to my uh, computer, install it, bring it into Photoshop or use it in Photoshop. And now I can see what that looks like. I can see what this font looks like as it. Uh, so I kind of like this Kinescope regular the best. And I'm going to go with that. Now, keep in mind, notice there's a, hey, refine the selection to improve the results. Well, what do you mean refine the selection? That's right. Now that I made my selection, I got handles on it. So I can actually contra contract it and say, hey, what would, a, what would you say if I just did the C and the A? And it'll maybe give me different choices. Or what if I did the CFF but not the E? Or maybe one of the Fs. And it may give me different choices. So you can experiment with different selections to maybe bring up different results based on what you're selecting. Maybe you're just looking for a similar C. And you can go ahead and choose that. And then it will, of course, uh, go out and find similar fonts based on what you have now. So any way you want to do it, and of course you can pick this up and move it around and say, well, maybe I just want this stuff. And it will go out and try and find something that's similar based on that. So I encourage you to play around with the match font feature. Now I'm going to go ahead and click OK, meaning I got the font I want. And I can deselect now, just hit Command D on my keyboard. Now I'm going to duplicate that layer just for a second. I just want to show you guys something real quick. Now that I got the duplicate layer, I'm going to move the other one over here. So this is the one we, we like. But I want to experiment with uh, the original one. So I'm going to go back to my type tool. And with that layer selected, in my type tool, I'm going to pick a different font because I just want to show off a different feature that's kind of new to Photoshop when it comes to choosing, not only choosing your font, but choosing different glyphs in your font. The glyphs panel was added to Photoshop. We love that. But let's go ahead and choose uh, one of my favorite script fonts. We'll choose Bickham Script Pro. And the reason I like to use Bickham Script Pro, especially for these uh, tutorials, is because I know Bickham Script Pro has an extended uh, glyph set or character set. So I'm just going to make that larger, bring it in place. Now, of course, it doesn't match. It's not supposed to. But what if I like this font or if my client likes it? And maybe they don't like the C or maybe they don't like the E in it. Well, I can select just the C and now we get in context the uh, alternate selection, alternate GIF selections for alternate glyph selections for the selected character. So for example, I get to see what other C's are available in this font. And if, I, if my client likes that font better or that C better, we can do it. Maybe they want to change the ending and I get all of these. It's like playing, uh, you know, Jeopardy or something. <laughs> show, show me the E's. Or, you know, I get to see all the E's on here. Um, and I can choose that one instead. So you can really make a custom type design logo just by experimenting with the different glyphs that are available in specific in different fonts. So your open type fonts, your type kit fonts, they all have uh, the potential to have extended character sets. Not all of them do but some do, and if they do, you can go ahead and play around with it. So for example, maybe I'll select the C in this one, and it's only got a couple. So it's got this one and this one. Uh, so I can go ahead and choose that, not much of a difference. Select the E, and there are no, or there are, or I was gonna say there are none, but 
Maybe that's the better one where it's not extended as far. So I can play around with these different character sets and uh, just by selecting the font or selecting the characters that I want to change using the uh, new alternate glyphs in context feature for Photoshop gives me exactly what I need. All right, so again, if I don't want to experiment with the one uh, we we're playing with and I want to end up with this one, just simply turn that layer off and of course, now I have something that's close and it's never going to be exact because the other one was created by hand. It's not really a font, but at least I got something to start with now for my uh, client to take a look at and say, hey, what if we use this from here on out for everything that you do? All right, so that's the match font feature. Next up is the uh, new liquify feature. Now, liquify has been in Photoshop for many years. But one of the things that got added to Photoshop Fix was the ability to have uh, face detection in Liquify. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first go into my filter menu and convert this for smart filters. That will make it non-destructive. So now it's a basically a smart object or that image is wrapped around um, uh, or smart object layer is created when I do that. So now that I've got this, I can go to the filter menu. I can come down to Liquify. And when I go to Liquify, um, the face option is detected or I can click on it if it wasn't. So what that gives me is the ability for all of these controls under the new face aware liquify feature. So I have control over the eyes, control over the nose, control over the mouth, control over the face shape. And I twirl them all up because the only one I really care about right now is the eyes. And in this particular case, you know, this is, let's pretend for a minute this is a stock photo, but let's pretend for a minute this client says, hey, I like this headshot. I just don't like how big one of my eyes looks. And, you know, rather than reshoot it and maybe have him squint a little bit or close his eye a little bit, we can say, well, let's, let's see if we can adjust that one eye. Now, here's the caveat. With the Face Aware Liquify, when I adjust anything to do with the eyes, it's going to do both of them. But that's okay. We're going to wreck this one on purpose. We're, we're not going to pay attention to it. We're really concerned about the bigger one. So all I'm going to do is just simply drop the size down a little bit. Okay. And as you can see, you can either go smaller or bigger. And it's doing both eyes. But don't worry about the eye that was okay. We're going to fix that. We're going to return it back to the way it was. And then we're going to, we can adjust the eye height a little bit. And again, up to you to adjust based on how much height you want to adjust for. All right, so now we made that eye a little smaller. We close it up, but we also ended up making the other one a little smaller too. So we'll click OK. And when we click OK, that applies it. And now what I can do is because the Smart Filter layer also includes a mask by default, I can go in with my brush tool and we can even make the brush size a little bigger. And we can go in and with my uh, Wacom pen here, uh, stylus here, we can go in and just mask this eye. In other words, all we're doing is putting this eye back to the way it was. We're just saying undo it on this eye. This is the way his eye originally looked. So now, you know, you could play around with pupils. You know, one pupil now looks a little bit bigger than the other, but that's okay because we made this a smart object or smart filter layer, we can go right back into where we were and tweak some more, or I can use even one of the existing features, such as the pucker or bloat, uh, to maybe make this eye a little bigger. This pupil, I should say. And again, we can do that. There we go. And hang on a minute. Let me undo that. <laughs> Made a bit of a mess of it. That's okay. And let me make my brush a little bigger. There we go. That should work a little bit better. Oh, you know why? Because we're using pucker, not bloat. My bad. Let's go back to the tool I should be on. Bloat tool. All right. Pucker's making it smaller. I was like, why is it doing that? Because I'm on the wrong tool. All right. We'll make it a little bit bigger. There we go. And again, it's still non destructive Ooh, we got too big here. Hang on. Easy to overdo that. So let's reset that one more time. Got a little carried away there. Exploded out a little bit more. And just, again, with Liquify, it's less is more. So just do 
maybe one click. All right, so there we go. Click OK. And again, the other one's mass, so it should return back to the way it was, and it did. So this is our before, and this is our after. We just made that eye a little smaller. Now, I think he's going to be pretty happy about it, so we can go right back to the Face Aware Liquify feature. We can go to uh, his mouth, and we can just add a little smile. There we go. Because, you know, it make him a little happier because he's happy now. His portrait looks a little bit better. All right, so with that said, uh, that's the Face Aware Liquify feature. You can have a lot of fun with it. You can do some constructive things, or you can do some fun things. Totally up to you. Use your powers for good, not for evil. All right, next up, and um, probably the one that I'm going to use the most, and it is our uh, new way of cutting an image out from its original source or background. So I've got this beautiful uh, landscape picture with a horse on it from Adobe Stock, and I'm going to open up another image that I want to put on top of it. So let's go and find uh, Marna Beach. I think that's the one. Yep, that's the one I want. And I'm going to go ahead and just simply drag this layer over to the horse layer and drag it down. All right, so that pull, pulls her in. And, of course, she came in. She's a little large for this image, so I need to scale her down. So I just hit Command T for free transform, Command Zero, Control Zero on Mac, or I'm sorry, PC, and we'll just go ahead and scale her down just a bit, make it look a little bit more proportional. And then again, I want, I don't want her legs to be covered in the front by those uh, flowers or whatever she's standing in front of. I'm just going to pull it down just a little bit more. All right, so now that I got that in place, obviously. The backgrounds are different. Now, they're both skies. They're just different. And also, we don't need any of this foliage down here at the bottom. So, in the past, I would have done a selection first, whether it's quick select, lasso, whatever. And then I would have gone into refine edge. Well, now you can do this all in one step. I can go to, you can still do it separately, but you can go to your select menu and you come down to the new select and mask. With the new select and mask, You'll notice a brand new onion skin feature defaulted to, in my case, 50, 60% transparency. So we'll bring it up a little bit more. And now I also have my selection features built right in. So I can do quick select, I can do lasso, I can do whatever I want. So I'm going to drop this brush down a little bit, bit smaller. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and quickly select her. So that's what quick select usually does. It makes a quick selection, not necessarily an accurate or best selection. And now what I can do is uh, with the new onion skin feature, I can go in and play with the transparency. So I can even increase the transparency of the background and see exactly what I would get, what I would get, would get right now. And that's, it looks good here, but trust me, there's some things we need to correct. So let's go back and let me show you a couple more options. We can see it as a red overlay. We can see it on black. We can see it on white. Onion skin, black, and white have the transparency slider. So for example, let's say I want to see it on black. Ah, now I can see some of the problems here. Ooh, I missed all that too. So because the selection is still live, I can hold down my option or alt key and subtract from that selection. Oops, too much. Add that back in. And I can always keep redefining the selection based on this. Now, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. And using the new refined brush, uh, I can go in, make that brush a little bit bigger. And it remembers what the original background was. So I can come in here and just simply say, let's redefine that. Let's bring out some more of that hair. Let's get rid of some of that background and redefine this mask based on what I'm doing now. So when I let go, it'll recalculate the mask based on what I just did. So same thing around here and same thing under her arm here. All right. And I think you will love cutting images out with this new feature. Now, of course, some images are going to cut out easier than others. It depends on the background. And I won't lie to you. Some backgrounds are nearly impossible to cut out. I mean, black hair on a black background. Good luck. But in many cases, this will help you out and be faster than anything we did before. So I can turn on a little smart radius, um, and that will help uh, around the edges that should be soft and the edges that should be hard. I can also now see this 
Uh, again, with the transparency slider, I can uh, see what that looks like on a black background, but more importantly, on the onion skin background, I can really start to see what that's going to look like on my new sky. And it blends in beautifully. So I encourage you to check it out. Now, you can also still have Shift Edge. You still have the same controls you had in Refine Edge. And I have the ability to output this to a new layer with a mask in case I did miss something. I can go back and fix it later. So we'll say, give me a new layer with a new mask. And there it is. And if I zoom out, we've got our subject now cut out. We still have the original layer, but we've got our subject cut out, the ability to move her around, even with part of the old background there. We can still mask out if we need to. But we got the ability to move her around anywhere in the scene uh, with her new transparent cutout hair. So I encourage you to download uh, the trial of Photoshop. If you don't already have it, check this out with your own images. And if you do have a Creative Cloud membership, you definitely want to do the update and check this out. So with that said, those are four new things I love about the new Photoshop CC 2015.5 update that just came out today, the June update for Creative Cloud. Check it out and we'll catch you on the next one.